My name is Dr. John Stone. I'm a rheumatologist at the Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston and a professor of medicine at Harvard University. In this video, we will discuss what many rheumatologists consider the most important and impactful drug used to control inflammatory diseases. This class of drug is called glucocorticoids. Glucocorticoids are remarkable medications that have swift, powerful effects on inflammation, but also have many possible side effects that can have a major adverse impact on patients' lives. These drugs must therefore be used carefully. The development of glucocorticoids for therapeutic use has been a 100-year journey undertaken by doctors, scientists, and brave patients that has brought us to our current understanding of these medications and the recognition that they must be used prudently. Let's discuss how glucocorticoids work so that you can understand better why their effectiveness has been linked nearly inevitably to toxicity. I will start with an analogy. <clears throat> Imagine that our cells are factories that produce what we need to live. This is true. The DNA located within each cell provides blueprints that the machinery within cells reads to make products. Proteins called promoters play the role of production managers within these cells. The promoters decide which blueprints go into production and therefore which products are made by the cell. Here is a representation of a promoter attaching to DNA, driving the process of protein production. Glucocorticoids can be thought of as messages to the production manager, the promoter, that communicate with the promoter by fitting into the promoter much as a key fits into a lock. Binding of the glucocorticoid to the promoter increases the production of some proteins and decreases the production of others. Let us extend our analogy to a specific example, describing an analogy between a cell in the body and a farm that grows wheat. Let us say that we work on a modern, highly mechanized farm. One robot at the farm has the task of taking fertilizer from a bin and putting it on wheat to help it grow. Another robot has the opposite job, conserving fertilizer by removing it from the bin and storing it in the barn when the time is right for storage. Now at the beginning of the planting season, the priority of the farm will be to grow wheat. The message to begin will act on the robot in charge of fertilization to spread fertilizer on the soil. Conversely, the robot that stores fertilizer away will become inactive. The net result is greater wheat production. The machinery of a cell in the human body is very much like the farm I described, responding to messages to ramp up or ramp down the production of proteins. The action of glucocorticoids on cells alters the production of many thousands of proteins throughout the body, leading somewhat indiscriminately to effects that are both good and bad. We will discuss how glucocorticoids do this later. Next, let's look at a curious puzzle arising from this diagram of four different steroids. Why do these chemical structures look nearly identical? The answer is that the different types of glucocorticoids are built from the same basic frame. This is fortuitous because it means that they generally have the right shape or conformation to fit into promoters. Nevertheless, there are small differences between the molecules that lead to either enhanced or reduced binding abilities. For example, cortisol, one of the body's natural forms of glucocorticoids, has a lower affinity for binding to promoters compared to prednisone and prednisolone, the more potent man-made versions. In summary, glucocorticoids exert powerful messages to large numbers of cells in the body, and the sum of these messages is generally toward a sharp reduction in inflammation. It does this by interactions with the promoters that control our cells' production of proteins. In addition, there are many types of glucocorticoids. Some of these are made naturally by the body, 
and are in fact essential to living normal, healthy lives. Other forms of glucocorticoids are man-made and designed to be more potent molecules compared with the natural forms, at least with regard to the reduction of inflammation. So, what are the specific genes that glucocorticoids are either silencing or enhancing? Well, the list of genes that mediate inflammation alone is quite long. These include genes that encode proteins, such as cytokines or chemokines. Cytokines and chemokines are messages that induce changes in cells' receptors, which reside on cell surfaces. Glucocorticoids also induce genes for enzymes, which are involved in cellular destruction and construction, and for adhesion molecules, which help cells adhere to other cells and to tissues with which they come into contact. In short, silencing or enhancing this list of genes allows glucocorticoids to exert control over many kinds of inflammatory processes. These include the airway inflammation of asthma, the joint pain of rheumatoid arthritis, or flares of IgG4-related disease. Now, let's take a look at some of the major toxic effects of glucocorticoids. First, infection. Glucocorticoids are designed to control inflammation by suppressing the immune system broadly. The flip side of these beneficial effects on suppressing inflammation is to reduce the ability of the same system to provide surveillance for and to prevent infections. These include common infections such as pneumonia, as well as rarer infections known as opportunistic infections, which are seldom seen among individuals who are not immunosuppressed. Such opportunistic infections seize the chance when the body's immune system is weak, leading to infections that are often severe and can be fatal. Next, the second complication of glucocorticoids to discuss is glucose tolerance or even diabetes. Insulin is a hormone that messages the liver to take up and store glucose, a sugar, from the blood. Glucocorticoids reduce the liver's sensitivity to insulin, leading to excess levels of glucose in the blood. A significant proportion of patients on glucocorticoids become diabetic, requiring the use of medications, at least temporarily, including insulin, to control their blood sugar. Insulin is produced in the pancreas, and it's important to note that diabetes is a particular problem in patients with IgG4-related disease because so many patients with IgG4-related disease have pancreatic damage from their underlying disease itself and are therefore more susceptible to the adverse effects of glucocorticoids on blood glucose control. The likelihood of glucocorticoid-induced diabetes is proportional to the dose of glucocorticoid used, as well as to the duration of treatment. The long-term consequences of glucocorticoid-induced diabetes include heart attacks, kidney failure, nerve problems in the feet and hands, vision loss, and many others. Third, high blood pressure. Hypertension is another well-known toxicity of glucocorticoid treatment. Glucocorticoids lead to an excess of a blood electrolyte called sodium, primarily through their effects on the kidneys. The retention of sodium leads in turn to the retention of water. The resulting increased blood volume leads to high blood pressure, as well as other complications such as leg swelling or edema. Fourth, bone loss. Glucocorticoids have a profoundly negative impact on bone mineral density and can lead to osteoporosis and an increased risk of bone fracture. Glucocorticoids cause osteoporosis through several mechanisms, one of which is through a reduction in the body's ability to absorb vitamin D and calcium from the gastrointestinal tract. Both vitamin D and calcium are crucial to normal bone function. Reductions in bone mineral density, as measured by bone densitometry, is one of the most sensitive measures of glucocorticoid toxicity. Fifth, glucocorticoids can have a profound impact on brain function. The pathways through which glucocorticoids affect central nervous system function are not understood completely. 
But suffice it to say that glucocorticoid treatment can lead quickly to insomnia, depression, a dangerous elevation of the mood known as mania, and even psychosis. The great majority of patients treated with glucocorticoids experience difficulties with sleeping at high doses of glucocorticoids, and I have seen prednisone lead to profound depression after only a week of therapy. These significant effects of glucocorticoids on brain function are generally reversible once patients are able to discontinue treatment, but because they can be so impactful if they occur, they underscore the care that must be used when prescribing these medications. I'm always amazed at how almost every cell in the body is affected by glucocorticoids. Since we generally cannot target this drug to only one part of the body, you can see why it is so challenging to separate the good effects of glucocorticoids from their negative, unintended consequences. A major area of research now is how to develop glucocorticoids that retain all of their positive effects but blunt the most common and severe adverse effects. In our next and final video, I will address how we use glucocorticoids in IgG4-related disease. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.